On 3rd of May 1999, a group of Pakistani soldiers, disguised as terrorists, sneak past the LOC and occupy a few peaks in Kargil. This was quickly observed by local shepherds, who then informed the Indian Army. The Indian Army responded by sending a patrol team to look for the intruders. But the patrol team is captured and later brutally executed. Immediately after this incident, the Pakistan army begins heavy shelling across the LOC into Kargil and other nearby sectors. This shelling caused ammo dumps in Kargil to be damaged. By 10th May, the Indian army detects multiple intrusion in Dras, Kaksar and Mushko sectors. The intruders have occupied almost 132 posts belonging to the Indian army. It was now clear to India that this was no raid by terrorists, but part of a large-scale plan rolled out by the Pakistan military to slice a piece of India's land. Pakistan's Kargil attack plan was not new. It is believed that the plan was drawn way back during the time of General Zia, but was shelved multiple times due to lack of political will and right timing. But when General Musharraf became the army chief, he activated the plan covertly. The infiltration was codenamed Operation Badra. The objective of the plan was to sever the link between Kashmir and Ladakh. This is achieved by occupying the high elevation post and positioning artillery close to the Srinagar Lake Highway, thereby cutting the supply route to the Siachen Glacier and thereby forcing India to withdraw from Siachen. Pakistan also believed that any tension in the region would internationalize the Kashmir issue, helping it to secure a speedy resolution. But why Kargil? Kargil and its adjoining townships are no ordinary places. This is a mountainous terrain with an average elevation of 13,000 feet above sea level. Pakistan's master plan was to secretly send in soldiers during the closing of the winter season, occupy the vacant Indian post, dig in deep and acclimatize themselves and be ready to fight the Indian soldiers returning to their post in spring. The nearby base of Skardu would serve as a logistics and supply base. This base is off limits to the Indian artillery. Each of these posts occupied by the Pakistanis was laid out high in the mountains and well camouflaged. They were supplied with copious amount of shoulder man pads like Stinger and Anza, anti-aircraft fire, grenades, light and heavy machine guns, and food. The supply was enough to hold on for the entire winter. Pakistan's North Light Infantry was tasked for the job. Pakistan assumed that occupying the commanding heights Acclimatization and a secure supply route would make the Indian military suffer unacceptable casualties, forcing them to a negotiation in Pakistan's favor. But the Pakistanis, as always, was wrong in their assumptions on India and the world's response. On realizing the gravity of the situation, India launched Operation Vijay. The Indian Army, headed by General Ved Malik, mobilized 200,000 Indian troops. At first, India wanted to know the exact scale of Pakistani intrusion. So on 21st of May, India sent a reconnaissance plane, Canberra PR-57, from the 106th Squadron. However, while on mission, Canberra was shot at by Anza, a heat-seeking SAM missile. The plane was damaged and returned to its nearest IF base. After this incident, India requested the US to provide GPS data of the location. But the US declined the information as they believed that providing the GPS data would escalate the war beyond the LOC. India then made its own estimate and devised a counterattack plan. On 25th May, the Indian Air Force launched Operation Safed Sagar. Ground attack aircrafts like MiG 27 and MiG 21 took off from their bases in Srinagar and Anavantipura and started striking the Pakistani mountain post. The MiGs mostly used dumb bombs which were deadly but not very accurate. As a consequence, the air attack did not start well. On May 27, a MiG-27 flown by Flight Lieutenant Nachiketa suffered an engine flameout and crashed on the Pakistani side. Flight Lieutenant Nachiketa was captured by a Pakistani patrol and taken as prisoner of war. Squadron leader Ajay Ahuja, who was escorting Nachiketa in his MiG-21, was shot by a Pakistani Stinger missile. His plane crashed, but Ahuja, who ejected safely, was captured and executed by Pakistani ground soldiers, a clear violation of Geneva Convention. 
India quickly realized the MiG fighter jets flying at 700 to 800 kilometers per hour were not effective against the small Pakistani posts perched on mountain tops. Also, they were becoming prone to stinger missiles fired by the Pakistani soldiers. So the Indian Air Force changed tactics and decided to deploy the Mi-17 helicopter gunships for the mission. The slow-moving helicopters can see the targets better and can hence fire the missiles more accurately. To counter the heat sinking Stinger missiles, the Indian Air Force fitted the helicopters with a countermeasure dispensing system or flares. But the flares kit was in short supply. On 28 May, the Indian Air Force set its sights on the Tololing Ridge Post. This post was strategic as it overlooked the Srinagar Leh Highway and was also very steep. The Mi-17 helicopters in formation of four each took off from their base in Srinagar and proceeded to the Tololing post. As the formation neared its target, they were spotted. The Pakistanis launched multiple manpad strikes on them. However, the Mi-17 dodged these missiles by using their flares. One by one, each Mi-17 fired their full barrage of 128 57mm rockets on the Pakistani post. In the melee, a Stinger missile hit one of the Mi-17 which did not have the flare kit attached. The chopper burst into flames and crashed, killing all the four crewmen. After this tragic incident, the Indian Air Force changed its strategy again. They withdrew all the Mi-17 helicopters from combat and resorted back to the MiG fighters. But this time, laser-guided bombs would be used. Meanwhile, by the 6th of June, the Indian Army launched a major ground offensive consisting of heavy artillery fire using their 155mm Bofors gun. These guns pounded the Pakistani positions day and night. By the 9th of June, the Indian Army had captured two key positions in the Batalik sector. After this, the Indian Army now set its sight to send in troops to take the strategic Tololing post. But it will not be easy. In spite of heavy artillery fire and air attack, the Pakistanis dug deep and held their post. Due to its heavy fortification, previous attempts to capture the post failed with India taking heavy casualties. Learning from the earlier mistakes, the Indian Army tasked the 18 Grenadiers and two Rajputna rifles to attack the post. For four hours before the attack, as many as 120 artillery guns pounded the Tololing Ridge incessantly, firing at least 10,000 shells, that is equal to 50,000 kg of TNT, enough to pulverize most of New Delhi. This heavy artillery fire softened up the intruder's post. The attack team divided themselves into three groups. Each of the groups attacked from a different side. After a heavy fighting, the Tololing post fell at midnight. The victory at Tololing was a major morale booster for the Indian Army. By the 4th of July, the Pakistan Army's gamble was not heading anywhere. The CIA informed American President Bill Clinton that Pakistan Army was now covertly moving its nuclear missiles, possibly for deployment. Clinton was furious. He immediately asked Pakistan President Nawaz Sharif to unconditionally pull back the Pakistani troops inside the Alosi. Sharif now had to take a tough decision. He ultimately ordered the Pakistan Army to pull back. By the 8th of July, the Indian Army took back a last major hill post called the Tiger Hill from the Pakistanis. As the Pakistanis retreated, the Indian troops quickly recaptured all the left off points. By the 25th of July, with all Pakistani regular and irregular forces retreating, Prime Minister of India, Atul Bihari Vajpayee, declares Operation Vijay a success. It was a day of jubilation for the whole of India. According to the official figures, India lost around 527 soldiers and around 700 Pakistanis were killed according to the US State Department. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif later revealed that around 2,700 to 4,000 Pakistani regulars died in the conflict. If you like this video, please subscribe and comment. Thanks for watching.